So just like with a firm, if we have multiple individuals buying stuff, we need to add up their demand across all these individuals to figure out how many buyers there are in total for a product. Okay. So suppose we've got two people and they each demand some food. Well, let's say shelter, right? Why not? Here's person one and their demand may look like this. And here's person two. Their demand might look like this. And we can add their demand together to figure out the demand for the entire market. Okay. And I don't bother so much with the lowercase uppercase distinction here because we're not going to very often figure like do the demand for whole people, but we could, we should probably have this be more like Q of S. Q with a subscript of S and then a capital Q with a subscript of S. Okay, so if we're going to add these two together, how do we do it? Well, we can say if the price is up here, the only person who's buying is person in market one. Okay, and in fact, until the price gets down to here, the only person buying is the person from market one. So we can just say at the beginning, it just looks like person one's demand. Okay. I'm trying to draw this nice curve. We're going to leave it there. Once we get down to this price, we have to add in the demand from person two. Okay. So person one wants this quantity, person two wants this quantity, and we have to add those together to get the demand from the two of them. So maybe it's out here. Okay. And then as we go down here, we've got this level of demand from the first person this level from the second person. And if I'm eyeballing it, it's probably somewhere around here maybe. And so you can see that the slope sort of gets spike spread out as we go down here. Okay. But it's never going to get all the way to zero or it's never going to intersect that curve exactly because this person over here always wants a little more, at least as we've drawn it. But it's the same basic idea that we just add so the total demand is equal to the individual demand of each person in the market. Okay. If there's N people, we add them all up like so. And in the simplest case, again, in the simple case where everyone's identical, they all have the same demand, same income. Well, then we just need to say that the total demand is n times each person's individual demand. Okay. And the last thing I want to point out is that these demand functions, so, you know, I had it food as a function of, in the last example, I think we had this as our demand. Notice that y is income and that depends on there. Alpha is preferences, that depends. So those things all could, in theory, affect demand as well. All right stuff that affects demand. We've got the price in the bottom. The price of the good, but also income affects and the utility function. So if the utility function changes, which might occur, for example, if uh, people's like uh, advertising, for example, maybe makes people aware of a new product or gives them new information about it and changes the value that they put on it, then that may change the utility function. All of those things can move that demand curve around, okay? But the last one that can also do it is the price of other goods. And the Cobb-Douglas production function is unusual in that it doesn't include this one. But the Cobb-Douglas production function is not the only one that exists. And as we'll see in the next few videos, lots of other production functions do depend on the price of other goods when determining demand. Okay.